Hello, gems, and welcome to the Sapphire Star. Have you ever been frustrated because you're like, yo, I got some accessories for my VTuber, but there's really not too many good tutorials out here, or I can't find some tutorials for how to get accessories to move nicely on my 2D VTuber like this? I'm gonna show you how I move accessories in this video today, how to create really nice working physics in live 2D cubism for your 2D VTuber. So if this is something you're aiming for, this visual right here, this is going to be a great video for you, and it will work and apply for pretty much any accessory. You could do this same technique. And if you're interested in character design and VTubing, you should definitely watch till the end of the video because I have some really great and exciting news to share with you. All right, let's get started. I'm just going to show you a little bit again what this is sort of going to look like by the end. So if you look at the bell, the bow, and the gem, my little sapphire gem here, this is a little example of pretty much what it'll be looking like by the end of this tutorial. So we're, I'm going to show you, we're going to restart from scratch everything here so I can show you how we're going to do this and make this work. First thing on the list is you're going to want to make an X parameter, which is, as we know, across the screen, and a Y parameter, which is up and down. So the first step is we will be creating new parameters for the accessory that we would like to move. In this case, I would like to move my sapphire gem. So we are going to create a new parameter, click this button down here, and type in necklace. I just like to call it swing. I definitely just spelled necklace wrong. Next necklace. <laughs> Next necklace swing X. And that's going to be our X parameter and you're going to want to copy that. I just highlighted it and click command C and then paste that down here and you can erase the spaces. This is very important if you're using VTube Studio, which is what I will be using at the end of the video to showcase. You want to make sure that whatever your name is, is next to the ID in param. So just name after param, whatever the thing is. All right, next, I like to use negative 15 and 15. You can experiment with these and see how it would affect your thing differently if you are interested in that. If you ever get something saying like invalid ID, you just change some stuff around like I'm just gonna change it to a lowercase it doesn't really matter if it's uppercase or lowercase as long as it's the same named the same thing up here okay perfect so we will just click okay there we have necklace swing X I already have one up here because this was the from when I did it before and then we're gonna do a necklace bounce Y so we're just gonna create another parameter and call it necklace bounce Y once again we'll repeat we're gonna command C copy that and then we're gonna erase this two here and just type in necklace bounce Y and I'll just lowercase the N again and then we'll do negative 15 on the minimum and 15 for max okay great and now I'm just going to get rid of my old ones here I'm just gonna click delete you will not have to do this step unless of course you had them and you're redoing them now okay perfect so the first step for me is I have the deform path edit tool going around the necklace I'm just going to reset that so I can redo it so you can see sort of what that looks like. So if you've never used the deform path edit tool, once we go onto it, it's going to be this little button up here. Make sure you're on the plus add control point. And you basically just add points that's going to allow you to control the thing. This could be really good for anything that's long, like a piece of hair, or a, as you see here, like a necklace string. You can pretty much gauge whenever you want to use this technique. You could either use warp deformers, which you may have learned in other videos or another series of mine that you've watched. But the other great thing you can use here is this deformer. So you could just use your best judgment. There's really no right or wrong answer. Now Next, we're going to make sure we go to this arrow up here to click so then we have this and we can move the necklace around. Great! You're going to drop three points onto the necklace swing X. So these are called keys. So again, the middle means it's in its neutral state, however it naturally looks. The right means it's going to moving to the X axis to the right across and the left point when you right click on there is going to bring it to the left. So we're just going to move that. So I'm going to snap to this right point, far right point by right clicking on the green dot. And then we're going to grab our green points here and start moving those over. This is just for moving over. I'm not going to move this. You probably don't want to move the base right there because the base is not going to be swinging that much because it's being blocked by the neck. So just having a little bit of background information on how these things would move can be really helpful. And in fact, you can grab a mirror and put on a necklace yourself and sort of swing back and forth and see what it looks like if you would like to get a better idea of what kind of movement goes on. And a good rule of thumb for animation always is to exaggerate something a little bit more than how it would normally move because that makes really beautiful and fluid animation. And in fact, I will leave a link down below to an amazing book called The Animator Survival Toolkit that I recommend everybody get if they're interested in any form of animation because it is. It teaches you so much and it's just a really cool thing to have on hand, especially if you're going to be making lots of live 2D characters or be animating a lot in general. Great. So as you can see, this moves to the right. We're just going to do the same thing now with the left. So we'll snap back to the middle, snap to the right just to check everything. And then we'll right click and snap to the left green dot and do the same thing. I'm just going to be clicking and moving these points. Remember, if you're not able to move it, make sure 
sure you're clicked on that selection tool up there because if you're still on the deform path edit tool up there it's going to cause you some problems you won't be able to move it so we will keep moving this guy over and we you can adjust this later too this is just the starting point for you at the moment you could adjust it later if you see that it needs more once you test out in the physics window so just get a good starting point here for both okay awesome next we're going to go to the necklace y bounce i'm going to click on this i'm also going to drop the three points once more so the bounce means up and down so what i like to do for the far right is we're going to next we're going to move to the necklace y bounce for this one we actually want to move up to our warp deformer and off of the necklace strap itself if i click on the warp deformer you can see i can only move the warps and not the deform path edit tool so that's a technique here and something to always keep in mind as well so we're going to go to the warp deformer specifically for this bounce part just because it's a better way to move it up and down rather than using the warp deformer i mean rather than using the deform path edit tool again this is your best judgment there's no right or wrong answer you could do either you could do whatever you think looks best but this is what i'm doing so necklace bounce y we're going to drop the three points and for the far right we're going to snap to our far right point i'm just going to pull this up here and we're going to pull the necklace up a bit i'm just going to leave these two guys up here in place because we don't really need that to bounce as much and we'll move these middle points like so so then we have that moving up a little bit so this is when your character moves up and down like bobs their head like this so it would make sense for something to bounce like that and you can add that to pretty much again you can add physics like this to pretty much anything on your model which will make it look just really good just really good as long as it makes sense to move of course so we have that and then we're going to go and right click snap to the left and we're going to pull it down instead because remember we're on the y axis this is up and down while the other one we are working on was the x axis which is right and left so this looks pretty good we can just go ahead and test things again great so that is our main necklace and now we're just going to want to do a separate one you could do it all under one and just move on to the next part here if you wanted to but i'm also going to do a separate movement for the gem itself because it's going to have its own physics beyond just the strap so we're going to do exactly pretty much the same thing we did before so we don't need a deformed path edit tool on the necklace because it's not a long like string like hair or the necklace would be we're just going to use the warp deformer because it's just going to be a better movement system for this particular item which is the gem so we got the necklace swing x we're going to drop three points again go to the right and i'm just going to go ahead and hold shift on my keyboard to keep this in place and i will move it here and i'm actually going to move it up a bit too you don't always want to break this rule here by moving it up even though we're on the x-axis i do it sometimes it's not necessarily the best form of practice but yo whatever works works am i right so we got that moving here and then we're just going to go to the snap to the left and i'm going to do the same thing and move it up so we're going to go here i'm also going to tilt this quite a lot because again this is some physics this is going to be tilting swinging so just watch your go to the mirror and watch a necklace that you're wearing dangle and like see how it moves or maybe watch a youtube video or something whatever helps you uh, understand how you're going to be moving something when it's making these movements so great now we have the across and we want to do the bounce for this as well though up and down y so we're going to drop three points once more we're going to go to the right looks like this is already pretty much bent because of what we did so we're actually fine now we're good to go so i'm going to link the x and the y parameters very important that you do that so then it has the full range of movement here remember you can unlink these at any time and go back and edit it's not going to affect it just make sure you link it back up when you're done or when you're ready to use your vtuber in vtube studio so next we're going to go up to our physics window you go to modeling you go to open physics settings and we are going to add two different physics settings one for the bounce and one for the x axis which is across so we'll click add then we're going to type necklace bounce or necklace swing x i'm just going to say number two just because i've already done this before for the sake of this tutorial for input you can just do the i'm going to say body input because the necklace is on the body if it was like the bow if i was doing bow physics up here i would choose head so we're going to choose body input and then for the physics preset we'll just do long i usually choose long as a default uh, but you can mess with that and see what the differences are as well if you wanted to yourself great so this is the x and y so something we can test uh or something we want to do right off the bat is go to your output settings right click add and then you're going to add the parameter that we literally just created so we have necklace swing x this is the one we just just talked about we're going to add that make sure you change your scale to 15 that has to do with when we set the parameter maximum and minimum earlier so we got this set to 15 which is great so as you can see this is already moving back and forth a bit we already have the physics working for us which is fantastic so we can go back to our input settings and make sure these are at 100 percent effective if yours is not then you can mess with the settings down here this looks pretty good to me i think we're good to go as i'm moving it i'm liking how it looks and if i wanted to go back and make the necklace swing even more to the right 
right or left you could go back to your parameters and edit that so next I'm going to click another add and then we're gonna call this necklace bounce so this is gonna be Y2 and I'm just naming it two again because it's my second version body input as before and then we will go to long for the prefab and go to output settings right click add and then once again we will scroll down and we will go to necklace balance Y and click OK. Change your scale to 15. Perfect. And then once again, this should be good to go. You can check your effectives there. And now I'm just going to click in this window. I'm clicking with my mouse left key and I'm swinging it back and forth. And we're going to test up and down now. So it looks like it might not fully be doing up and down. And this is when you want to check. I go back to the input and we're going to want to click add and go to Y body. So the body moving up and down is going to be important for this. So let's scroll body Y. We're going to check that so that it knows when we go up and down that we wanted to utilize and we need to make sure this is a hundred so we're going to delete body z here so i'm just going to click on it and then click delete up here and then turn this to 100 percent effective and then it should be bouncing now so as you can see my necklace is bouncing when i move her up and down you can see the effects we have it moves all around now which is great and again you can mess with your settings here to see because depending on the type of accessory how long the accessory is whatever just keep messing with these and testing it and seeing like is does that look right you could just use your best judgment use your eye to see if it's working well or if it looks good so there we go now you're all set to go once you export your model to vtube studio your accessories should work alongside the other physics that you've been working on as long as you check that box to export your physics when you export your model if you're unsure of how to export your model to into vtube studio please check out this video next that will be show you exactly what you can do and how you can upload your model to vtube studio to test to see how things are working for you Yo, you did it. You got it done. You got your accessories. They probably look so amazing. I am super duper proud of you. Awesome. So I said I had an exciting announcement for the end of this video. If you have not done so already, make sure you check out my beta testing application if you are interested in learning how to design characters, whether it is for creating your own visual novel, if you're hoping to take on clients and do VTubers for them in the future, if you're working on building a character design portfolio, you do not need to know how to draw to be in this class. This is strictly teaching you how to come up with ideas and get them out on paper pretty much. This is completely free. The, co the class will cost money in the future, but right now the deadline for you to apply for beta testing is the beginning of April in 2022. Otherwise, you can buy the course if it's anytime after this date, after the beta testing has been complete and the course has been uploaded. So definitely make sure you check that out. I'll leave that link down below. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time on the Sapphire Star. Bye!